Hello people, welcome to Gurukla. I am Jai. So today in this video, we are going to see about certain cellular concepts that is used in cellular uh, architecture. So today we will be highlighting uh, or we will try to understand what frequency reusing is. So that will be our first topic, what, will, what is frequency reusing. And then later on we will be focusing on the channel assignment strategies and their particular types. So these are the two topics which you are going to see in this particular video. So let us get into the topic. So first of all, what is frequency reusing? So by the name suggests, we are trying to reuse the frequencies is what something we call it as frequency reusing. But our question is, why do we need to go for this frequency reusing? Why do we need to reuse this particular frequency and what made this concept a necessary one in and cellular communications. So that is what will be the prime discussion of this particular topic. So earlier when the mobile radio systems were uh, developed, so it was trying to achieve a large coverage area by using a single high power transmitting antennas. So they were trying to uh, cover a large area by using only one single high power transmitting antennas on a tall tower. But this particular approach had certain drawbacks over here. So the drawbacks are, uh, the first drawback is only less number of calls can be handled over a large geographical region. So that is the very first drawback which has to be considered. If we use high power transmitting antennas, then only less number of calls can be handled in that particular geographical area. So that is the very first drawback because that is not in practical practically acceptable situation when uh, a cellular system can accept only lesser number of calls. So that is the very first drawback. And the second drawback is and the regulatory organizations was not able to allocate a particular spectrum in order to increasing demand of uses. So when the mobile users are getting increased day by day, the regulatory organizations could not able to allocate the particular spectrum. So that was a major problem, second major problem, which actually <coughs> uh, fought against this particular approach by using high power transmitting antennas over here. So in order to overcome these two drawbacks, in order to overcome these two drawbacks, there are certain modifications that have been done in the cellular architecture and that is what made actually made the frequency reusing come into the picture. So, and these drawbacks actually led ways to restructure the cellular architecture. So, what kind of restructure, what they did was, so instead of say for an example, if this is a very large geographical area served by a single base station antenna, what they did was, this particular geographical area was divided into smaller cells and then each and every cells have been served by small or low power transmitting antennas. So this was an approach that was done over here. So this is an modification that I have done for the cellular architecture. So the single high power antennas are replaced with many low power antennas over here. So many low power antennas. So each providing coverage range to a small region. And each and every small region over here is what we call it as cell. So this is a basic approach that we follow over here in cellular architecture. So in each base stations, so each base stations will be allocated a set of channel. So one set of channel will be allocated to each and every base station. So here in this particular case, this is base station one, base station two, base station three and base station four. So each and every base station here in this particular cell will be allocated a particular set of channels in order to manage the calls within that particular area. And the nearby base stations are allocated a different set of channels. So Doing so will result in a spectrum scarcity within a small region. So we'll come to this point later on, but officially and then theoretically, the cells are allocated in this particular way. So let us assume that this is a very large geographical area which has to be served. So instead of having one large antenna over here, what they did was they divided the entire large area into smaller group of areas. So here, one hexagon is what we call it as a cell. So this is what we call it as a cell over here. And then this again 
made an another problem say for an example i am allocating some set of channel free so let's let us take for an example this b is nothing but an channel spectrum that is allocated for this particular station and then i cannot use the same set of frequencies which is used by this particular cell over here in this particular cell so this cell has to be allocated a different set of frequency and this cell has to be allocated a different set of frequency and then so on so each and every cell in this particular area if we assign different set of frequencies to manage calls in that particular geographical area soon we will run out of the spectrum so that will lead to a serious problem we call it as spectrum scarcity problem so we do not have that much of spectrum to allocate in each and every cells which means unique spe unique spectrum cannot be allocated for each and every cell so in order to overcome this particular problem the concept came into the picture that is what we call it as frequency reusing or in other words this can be also called as frequency planning so what is it actually so frequency reducing is nothing but by systematically spacing so we should systematically space the base stations and their channel groups throughout a market the available channels can be reused as many times as necessary uh, make a note the channels can be reused as many times as necessary provided as long as the interference between the channel stations are kept under acceptable level so the meaning for this particular definition is as you could say observe let us consider that this is a particular cell which uses a frequency ranges of a so a is the frequency range that is allocated to this particular frequency and you could see that unique frequency sets are allocated for the neighboring cells b c d e f and g so what i'm doing is i'm reusing this set of frequencies again on a different cell over here so this cell is again using the diff same set of frequencies as used over here so these two cells is what we call it as co channel cells since they are using the same channel of frequencies and then also this is an particular cell where actually i am using the same set of frequencies so likewise i can use or i can reuse the same set of frequencies as many times as i need but the main thing which has to be considered is these two cells should not in undergo a serious interference problem so as long as the interference between these two cells are under acceptable levels i can reuse as many times as this as it is required so that is what the concept we call it as frequency reusing concept the figure represents the concept of cellular frequency reusing and you could observe that the we always use the hexagonal shape over here to represent a cell so the main reason why we use the hexagonal shape is nothing but so say for an example if you use circular shape then this area will be left unsolved over here in order to eliminate this particular area what we have to do we will have to overlap the circles like this so these regions will be oversolved so resulting in loss of power and then other shapes such as square triangle rectangles were also available and whereas all these shapes do not have a regular structure and then the antennas cannot be mounted on a center point of this particular structure so that hexagon is the cell shape which is universally accepted for representing a cell because they closely approximate a circle so that it is easy for us to plan and to manage any cellular systems so that is the reason why we go for hexagon shape so the actual radio coverage in a cellular system is what we call it as the footprints which are determined by the field measurements and propagation prediction models so there are two types of cells which can be considered the first one is center excited cell and another one is edge excited cell the center excited cell let us consider this is an cell and when the base station is placed at the center of this particular cell this is what we call it as center excited cell and in the other case when this is the cell and the antennas are mounted on any of these edges then this is what we call it as edge excited cell so these are all the differences between the two types of cells what we have so now we will march forward and then we will try to further understand how exactly the frequency reusing is done and how do i find two cells that are using the same set of channels in an specified geographical region 
So in order to understand frequency reusing concept, so let us first take that two variables. The first one is S. Your S is nothing but the total available duplex channel and K is nothing but <coughs> each cell is allocated a K number of channels. So obviously this is a criteria K should be less than S. So when these S channels are to be divided among N cells, then the space expression for the channel availability is given as S is equals to K times N. And then the N is the collective measure of cells uses a complete set of available frequencies, which is what we call it as a cluster. So let us go back to the previous slide to understand what cluster is. So in this particular thing, as you could see over here, as you could see, this particular area is what we call it as N cluster. So the cluster is nothing but the area which actually uses so let me highlight the particular cluster on a different color. So over here when you see, so this is the region. So this is the region which actually uses unique frequency set and this region is what we call it as a cluster. And so this cluster can be copy pasted as many times. So here the cluster size is what 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So here n is equals to 7 so that the cluster size is equals to 7 so this is what something we call it as a cluster so and then the total number of duplex channel c can be expressed as c is equals to m times kn and we already know that kn is equals to s so that we can replace the values of kn like this yes so typically the value of n cannot be any random number the value of n can be given as n is equals to i squared plus ij plus j squared where i and j are nothing but the non-negative integers so by satisfying this particular criteria n can take any values between 4 7 or 12 or etc it goes on so if it should be taken care that the uh, cluster size uh, cannot be of larger size if the cluster size goes very large then the ratio between the cell radius and the distance between the co-channel cells would go very small and if the cluster size goes very small then the co-channel cells are located that are much closer to each other which means the distance between the co-channels will go very less so that the interference will go high so in this particular diagram let us try to understand uh, where exactly the core cell is located so let us consider that this is a cell which is using a frequency set a was mentioned in the figure here i will take the cluster size as 19 so here as you could see that i is equals to 3 and then j is equals to 2 so when you substitute i is equals to 3 and then j is equals to 2 in this particular expression you will end up with an n value that is is equals to 19 so the cluster size is 19 over here so you will have 19 cells in this particular cluster 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 8 9 10 11 12 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 and 19. So these 19 cells will be forming a particular cluster and then each and every cell will use a different set of frequencies over here and in order to find out where exactly the another core cell is located let's just take for an example i wanted to find out where exactly the core cell of this particular cell is located which uses the same set of thing we will have to proceed with the two steps the first one is move i cells long on any chain of the hexagon and you and then you will have to turn 60 degrees in counterclockwise and then move up to j cells so as of our example is concerned the value of i is equals to 3 and the value of j is equals to 2 so first of all i will jump i cells on an hexagon chain so here I, this is my first step this is my second step and this is my third step and from here on i will turn to 60 degrees and then I will move 60 degrees counterclockwise and then I will move two steps that is j is equals to 2 so this is my first step 
and this is my second step so I will land in this particular cell so this particular cell is actually reusing or these two cells will have the same amount of frequencies using the frequencies have been reused in this particular channel so this is the minimum criteria that is required in order to keep these two cells apart so that interference will also be under the controllable level so this is what entirely something we call it as frequency reusing so in general as an outset we can not use or we cannot reuse the same set of frequencies on two different cells as our wish there are certain criteria which has to be satisfied so that the interference can be reduced to a greater extent so that is all about the frequency reusing so now we will march forward and then we will see what channel assignment strategies are so now we will see about what is channel assignment strategies so in this channel assignment strategies we will see how the channels are assigned to different set of cells so for effective or efficient utilization of radio spectrum there are two important things which has to be considered the first one is it should have an increased capacity and then it should have a lesser amount of interference so these two things are to be considered while designing an effective radio spectrum or by allocating radio spectrum so the channel assignment strategies can be classified into two types the first one is fixed channel assignment strategy and the second one is dynamic channel assignment strategies so the selection of channel assignment will have an higher impact on the performance of the system when the user is handed off from one cell to another cell so handed off handover is nothing but a process when say for an example these are the two cells which is located very close by and then the user is moving in this particular direction so the call is established when the user in this particular cell let us call this is cell 1 and this is cell 2 and this is base station 1 and this is base station 2 so when a user is generating a call or he is um, <coughs> creating a call when he is on the cell c1 and he is migrating to base uh, cell 2 so that the call should not be dropped off in order to maintain the quality of service the call should not be dropped off and the call and the call details has to be handed over from base station 1 to base station 2 so the process of handing over the call from one cell to another cell is what something we call it as handoff so that is an basic introduction of this particular handoff and that is also a cellular concept which we will come across while studying the cellular concept so selection of channel assignment strategies will play an important role while making this handoffs so first of all we will see what is fixer channel assignment strategies so here in this fixer channel assignment strategy each cell is allocated with a predetermined set of voice channels and all these predetermined set of voice channels are allotted permanently so all these voice channels are permanently allotted to a particular cell and then that is an hard limit so this particular cell can use only this much amount of channel is what restricted over here so any attempt to place a call say for an example an user wants to make a call in that particular cell can use the channel which is allocated to that particular cell only and if all the channels in that particular cells are occupied then new cells or mean new calls are blocked which means a subscriber could not able to receive any services on that particular thing so this is considered to be a major drawback which has to be addressed immediately so in order to overcome these drawbacks there are several variations that have been proposed in channel assignment strategy and one among the important variation is borrowing strategy so as like in the real life when we run out of money we will be borrowing certain amount of money from our friends or relatives so similarly when a particular cell is running out of assigned spectrum then that particular cell can borrow a certain amount of frequencies from the neighboring cell and then while borrowing a particular frequencies from the neighboring cell your MSC will actually supervise the borrowing facilities without introducing any interference among the channel so while borrowing the cells that should not lead to an interference and all these procedures will be taken care by this MSC for your information your MSC is nothing but mobile switching center so that is all about fixed channel assignment strategies and fixed channel assignment strategies is not of greater advantage because the spectrum are quietly wasted over here say for an example if in a particular cell there are lesser number of users then the channel that is allocated for that particular cell will be kept idle for the most of the time so this will not be an optimal solution when uh, 
there are dynamic number of uses in each and every cell so in order to overcome the drawbacks of this particular fixed channel assignment we will migrate towards dynamic channel assignment strategies so here in dynamic channel assignment strategies as support as opposed to predetermined set of voice channel that is already assigned here in dynamic channel assignment the channels are not permanently allotted so that has to be taken care of that has to be taken noted so the channels will not be allotted permanently to any of the cell instead so each time a call has to be made each time if a user wants to make a call then the mobile station has to place a request to the serving base station requesting or demanding for an channel so base station will in turn request a channel to mobile switching center so the mobile switching center will be allocating a particular channel for this for this mobile station so that the call is made and then while allocating this particular channel to mobile station the msc will follow certain algorithms to allocate the particular channel the algorithm will consider the future blocking within the cell the frequency of use of the candidate channel reuse distance of the channel and then another costs function will also be taken into account for assigning a particular channels so these things will be taken into account while assigning a particular frequencies to a particular cell so these are all the major concepts that is existing in the channel assignment strategies and the dynamic channel assignment strategy sometimes it is also called as on demand on demand assignment the channel uh, since the channels are allotted only based on the demand so that is all about today's video so with this concept so today in this video we might have seen two concepts one is um, <coughs> frequency reusing concept frequency reusing and then the another one is channel assignment strategies so all these channel assignment strategies are very much important in cellular communications and then so so that is all about today's video so in the next video we will see about the different topic until then happy learning thank you